Hello, I'm Samsa again, and now we move to the second entry in our double headache uh, article, double review, double first impressions thing. And this one is TIS100. It has called itself the assembly uh, programming game nobody wanted. Uh, it's currently in early access. And your job is to program a computer in assembly. So you might already get that this game might have some uh, complexities to it. Uh, so basically the, it, the each puzzle is that you are given certain instructions and you need to get the computer to do what you are told to make it to do. Uh, the computer itself, the TIS100, is it's a very unusual computer in that, you know, if it was just a regular old, like, uh, programming game, you would probably be programming in it with relatively, like, simple... It, the, like, the, uh, the assembly go code this game uses is very simple, but it, the architecture is what makes this game difficult, because the, ar uh, the computer consists of nodes. Uh, and basically each node works just like a CPU. So each node is programmable and you you seriously you need to program each CPU well no <laughs> I should use the correct terms when I'm talking about this stuff and then uh, a single node like you cannot complete any of the puzzles using a single node and the nodes are also very like they don't have they, they are very limited in their capabilities they cannot store more than two bytes well in this case, I'm going to call them a byte. Te technically, it's a word, but whatever. Uh, they they only have like two registers. They have the accumulator, which is the main register, and then it has a backup register, and you can store values in there if you need a little bit more space. But seriously, they cannot they cannot store like really any data, and you also need often need to move data from an input to an output, and usually the inputs and outputs are on the like uh, on the op uh, opposite sides of the computer. So you need to use at least some of the nodes to transfer data from one node to another, and then some of the nodes are naturally going to do some processing and stuff like that. And it's yeah, as you can see, the game is quite complex and. It's a it's seriously a game that for people that like to read read reference manuals. Uh, the game comes with one in PDF format. Uh, I do recommend you print it because printing is printing it gives you the like the real feeling of uh, like <clears throat> using this computer. Why would you read a PDF document when you are technically working with? Uh, and old. This is in qu huge quite quotation marks because I don't actually know anything about the TIS100. TIS100 is naturally a, it's a it's a completely fictitious computer. There, it, there is no such thing as far as I know. But uh, why would you why would you play this game without a like so-called real reference manual which you have printed? I myself I just printed it on single. A4 paper, single-sided, but I mean this is just awesome. And the reference manual, it basically, the game immediately throws you into the TIS100, there's no tutorial, no anything, and that's the way I actually like it. Instead, you are encouraged to read the reference manual. The reference manual gives you all the information you need, provided that you of course have some programming capabilities, because, well, it's it's already assumed, because this game is definitely aimed at programmers. There's just no way around it. If you are a non-programmer, I don't think you will find this game a lot more, uh, a whole lot interesting. In I recommend you instead learn programming before you start this game because, well, I'm not sure what will, what would happen if you actually learn programming through this game, but I am fairly sure that nothing good. Probably just a lot of frustration. But yeah, overall the the idea is very simple, and for a programmer, if this were a normal computer, 
all of the like the instructions you're given would be very very simple to actually do. The uh, the puzzles are something like read input A and input B, then sum th sum them together, or just you know do basic basic addition and then output it to output A. It would be very simple to do if you had just did it on a regular old x86 computer. But because of the the architecture of the, this 100, you will have some trouble actually doing that because the game introduces many like real problems such as uh, read write uh, lockups. So if you actually when you send data between two nodes, if you try to read or try to write to the uh, the other node at the same time, you will actually lock up the nodes entirely. The, the whole computer will just completely lock up and you will have to stop the run, you need to make fixes and then you will have to like redo. And uh, yeah, there, there are many ways you can completely fail this because all the nodes are actually, they are they run separately and they also run at, at the same time so every time an, in, uh, an instruction is run it's run on all of the nodes and that will definitely make things very very interesting because this kind of parallel programming is very difficult to do in real life and it's definitely quite difficult to do in TIS 100 as well so yeah it, it's TIS 100 is definitely a game for programmers and I don't see it being enjoyable by anyone else. Uh, the assembly code, the assembly language used by TIS100 is simple and it's, uh, it has a reduced instruction set so it's uh, very quick to... You're, you're, you can learn it quite quickly and it doesn't really like teach you... Uh, it, it does teach you some of the like basic uh, mechanics of assembly but I do recommend you actually like uh, maybe have some experience doing assembly. It's not really required, I think, because the game doesn't actually like deal with memory at all, because all the memory you're basically dealing with is the nodes. But uh, I do think that you might want to have at least some experience with like assembly uh, and maybe some lower uh, lower level languages such as C. Uh, C itself is not going to help you a whole lot because you, you're dealing with assembly, but some programming knowledge is definitely a must. And of course reading the reference manual is also a must. Uh, the game is currently selling for 7 euros as well, so I, th I think it's it's very acceptable. I, I personally love this game. I'm not very good at it, and I am currently stuck. Uh, the game is very difficult, like I said, but I just, it just, uh, games like this are basically what I love about programming without the annoying bits about programming. So you you get to solve problems and you will feel really good when you actually finish that, uh, uh, that nasty puzzle you have been working on for half an hour or more. I actually, one of the puzzles I did it required me to work for one and a half hours before I could like uh, properly complete it. Naturally, I do took some uh, bad steps at the beginning. I had to re uh, redo a lot of stuff, but I think that gives you an idea about what the TS100 actually requires. But I do recommend it for programmers. And I, I do believe we find quite a few of those in the Linux community. It's also a game that pretty much works anywhere, so I don't think you will like... I don't, th I don't think there's a reason not to get it, apart from the fact that if you are seriously someone who doesn't have an interest in programming, and doesn't have an interest in reference manuals, and doesn't have an interest in failing repeatedly and having to go back and debug everything by single-stepping your instructions, just go for it. I mean, if you if you seriously like programming, this is probably a game for you. And if you like computers in general and you are interested by like different computer architectures and like computers uh, in a very low level like this, 
this is something for you. The game also has a bit of a story. The get uh, the you are actually working on the TS100 to figure out what uh, uh, this uh, uh, this guy called Uncle Randy was working on, and the the computer contains notes from him, and actually they tell a, uh, the story. Uh, of the TIS-100, and the reference manual does have some very curious notes written on it. So there is definitely a bigger mystery going on, and you naturally need to complete the puzzles of TIS-100 to find out what's actually going on. Personally, I have no idea because I haven't played enough. This is mostly just first impressions. The, both of these games that I have talked about today are games that are super simple and they like getting first impressions that are relatively accurate is very simple because I don't have to actually play a whole lot. I have played uh, this 100 for I believe three hours so that's uh, quite a lot actually but of course I have only completed like five puzzles once again so you you might get an idea how long it takes to actually complete a puzzle in a TIS-100 and it only gets worse. So over time you will just find more difficult puzzles to complete. But I do recommend it for anyone who likes programming and is interested in this kind of a thing. It's very unusual and it's very unique and it works really well. It's an, it's a, uh, So far it has been a very enjoyable game and I will probably keep playing it. I want to complete at least like five more puzzles. Uh, at that point I might find myself just completely stuck with my relatively bad computer programming knowledge, but it, at least I will enjoy it up until that point. But I think that concludes it. Th this, that's basically what TIS100 has been, and hopefully you have enjoyed uh, this first impressions video, and we will see in future videos and live streams.